such a fine line it is. So, but you all want to win because we're all naturally competitive. But, um, and, and no better place to do it than this venue, to be honest with you. This, this can bring the best out of you, I think. I love what you said yesterday, Ronnie, about the, uh, the quarterfinals here. Yeah. Just being gladiatorial. Yeah. It's a gladiatorial event, and I think quarterfinals day, you know, there's a lot of snooker played all, all over that day, but um, it's, it's always seems to be a special night. Yeah, it really does. The football. atmosphere is amazing. Yeah, Two and a half thousand people and football. players Eagan playing on top four. Yeah. No better place to watch snooker. Interestingly enough, on the Lily Robertson front, he's called the Thunder from Down Under, and there's adverts all over the Tempodrome for the Thunder from Down Under on every single poster almost, but it's not him. Yeah. It's the Australian striptease, the male striptease actor here in, in May, so we might hang about for that. Uh, let's get their commentary booth then for our main game today between Tip Chaya and Ian Mark Selby. Let's get the naked truth from Neil Foles and Dave Hendon. Thank you, Colin. Looking forward to this one. I think this is a quintessential clash of styles. We've got Mark Selby, the great all-round match player, and Tep Chaya new, arguably the fastest player on the tour. He does not hang about, this young man. As we've already seen, it's 2-1 to Selby on the overall head-to-head. -head. First frame. But Tep Chai won the most recent meeting Tep at the Chai World Open break. in China earlier this season. Best of nine, replacing the last 16. Tep Chai on new, uh, much improved last couple of years, but has had a rotten time of it this season. He did well in the Paul Hunter Classic, got to the semi-final. Since then, he's only won two matches and they were both in this to qualify in the German Masters. He lost first round in his other seven tournaments, so he's on a rotten run, he's trying to change all that here, but what a draw, what a stinking draw to get first round. Mark Selby, world number one and world and UK champion, and indeed a former winner here two years ago. It's a tough draw, right? Especially given that uh, the styles are so different. But I think you, know, the, you pointed out that he won the last time they played, and that's got to count for something good in his favour. Uh, winning can become a habit, but so can losing. And as you say, his run has been dreadful. But now that Terry Griffiths is helping him, maybe that'll change something, because he's done pretty well with all of his other players that he's, he's looking after and he's been involved with. Yes, a very interesting uh, matchup that Terry Griffiths, one of the great players, full stop, but also one of the great tacticians. Tep Chara as I say, is lightning fast. Safety play not necessarily his strongest asset. Maybe that'll change now he's uh, linked up with Terry. That was a, quite a rare error in safety. I know that the cube was gone down the table, but clearly the red wasn't meant to go over the right corner. Seven. Okay, it's blocked off, but there are ways and means of Tepchai getting towards it, knocking it in from another red. The other way is the possible swerve around the brown, and that's what he's looking at now. It might be an option. I think it's a plant that he's looking at. Oh, well done. Very well done. He's in a hurry. He's probably two, two there. Well, that was a good effort, actually. Catch out on two. To pop the red and, and end up playing that shot. So he's won the early little battle battle within a battle in a long match. I mean, he may have played it to pot it directly, but he had quite a big target, and then the second red drops into the left middle. But more importantly, Selby's next shot is out of a snooker. Selby straight away. It's a, a nice shot to lay up to that red. Just checking to see whether it pots. It may actually go through the gap, this red. But by no means is it an easy starter. Like I 
Messi had to go for it, but he had to get it. Mark Selby won this title two years ago. He was 5-2 down to Sean Murphy, made a trademark Selby clearance to win the last frame of the afternoon and came back to win 9-7. This season he's won Paul Under Classic, the International Championship and the UK Championship. And he's so far out in front in the world rankings, you need a pair of binoculars to see him. Last Six. season... And this season, which of course is only about halfway through, he's earned just under a million. Incredible. Seven. Well, I mean, he plays in almost everything. I mean, he has missed out on one or two. Didn't play in all of the Home Nations events, actually. But uh, generally, he plays in most tournaments. And he's ultra consistent. And he would be the man on the tour who he'd probably least like to play, given that even on a bad day, he can grind out a victory. Of course, on a good day, well, he is the world champion and he's a brilliant player. He's a real tournament player and gets stronger as the event goes on. He can sometimes be a little bit vulnerable in the early rounds. Well, he's certainly an authentic world number one. The three biggest ranking tournaments 12. are the World Championship, the UK Championship and the International Championship by money. And he's won all three in the last year. Just wondered if the, at the Masters, if all the talk of the 13. Triple Crown and holding all three at the same time, just slightly in his head, he, he could have lost to Mark Williams. Williams had that kick on the blue in the decider when he was on his way to win, and then was a, was disappointing really in terms of performance against Barry Hawkins in the quarterfinals. Well, I think it, it just shows you, Dave, how difficult it is to hold all three. 18. Because he looks at times very much like the man to beat on the tour, but... You think that Steve Davis, Stephen Hendry, and Mark 19. Williams himself have held all three at the same time. It shows you how good they were and what they achieved. Anyway, it's made a good start here. That will drop in because he played it slowly enough. Came through that Tepchai miss. 25. Selby uh, was untroubled, I think it's fair to say, in qualifying. Remember, there's been two rounds in the 96. UK before now. He beat Deshuat Pumjang, another Thai player, 5 0. And China's Fang Zhong Man, also 5 0. So, not lost a frame yet. And they can be awkward, those qualifiers for the top players. If they're going to be vulnerable anywhere, it'll be in that environment with the multi table setup, no television. And the general feeling, I think, with a lot of them, that they don't really want to be there. They want to be here in a great arena like this. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. And it is a great arena. It really is uh, a lovely place to come and play, largely because of the supporters. They really are enthusiastic. Yeah, tremendous venue. Just a very hypothetical thought crossed my mind the other day that sometimes theatres have to be refurbished, revamped, if the Crucible during its period as the home of, of the World Championships had to have a year out, where would you play the World Championships in that year? I think you could bring it here, the final stages, and it would be a brilliant event. Uh, we know that it's going to stay at Sheffield, but it would, uh, it would make a pretty good uh, deputy for one year if anything ever happened. Yes, it's actually it's quite a hard venue to hire because, as Colin was saying, they have a lot of other things on, concerts and so on. And 45. That's why this tournament's only five days long. Quite difficult to actually get it for a week. Or even two. Well, that 
has gone wrong. I think he, he didn't mean to flick the red on the cushion on the way through. I think he played the cannon, but the keeper was just thrown offline. But he might just sneak this one into the left centre. It's a quite an acute angle. You can see there's not much pocket to aim at. It's nowhere near. Mark Selby, I think that gave you a full example of how difficult those shots are if you're standing in behind them. Because there's not much pocket opening there. There you can see, look at that. Char would like all the Reds out in open play and Selby would, would have absolutely no reason to bring them all into play given that he's 51 in front and he's a very good tactician. I might be looking at uh, the red to the left corner or indeed the double on the red up the table. I think he's about to look at it now. I think that's the shot and he would fancy him to get very close to it. As far as doubles go, that was a pretty good one. And now, things might start to happen here. Because you could screw this into the two reds, this green, if you wanted to, to really develop those couple of balls into play. What he's tried, and he's tried and failed. That was a chance. Four. Tap show no four. Yes, it's quite a big target, wasn't it, to get into those reds? He'd be disappointed, I think. So there's uh, 47 in it, 59 on. Yeah. Well, there's my point about Selby not wishing to get many reds into play. I wonder if Dupchai would be interested in playing the double again here. Well, he's good at those. That's two now. Yeah, that was a cruncher. Well, funny enough, Mark Selby's a great doubler as well. I think he's pulled background uh, as part of that. But this is two for two for Tep Chaya. Yeah, this is going to be more difficult than the double, though. Uh, right down the cushion with no angle on it. I mean, look at that. It's almost a hide into nothing. There's an argument here to play safe with the other two reds. Tap child, no eight. Plays the red on the right of the table, which of course he could do. It makes it more good opportunity for clearance. It's the only ball that's keeping him in the game. Well, 
that's the last thing he wanted. Yes, and Selby only needs the red. Yes, and uh, Tetchaya, well aware that uh, you would feel be end of frame. In fact, he needs a colour as well. One. But it's nicely on the blue. Yes, and, and when you look at this frame, you analyse the way it's been. Mark Selby making a 53 break, which was feeding from a mis mistake from Tepchaya. And his second scoring visit, red over the pocket, feeding from a mistake from Tepchaya. And that's what he's like. He's a real predator, kind of player that will always just wait. And he can wait all day for these chances to come. Yes, he's a very good closer of the shop, isn't he? You know, he keeps balls safe. When he closes the shop, he makes sure the shutters are well and truly down. I guess now we're into February. Fortune. The run into the World Championship, you can say, starts in earnest. It's only two and a bit months away. Selby, of course, defending champion at the Crucible, 15. but it doesn't have all the stuff about the curse of the first-time winner. He's a twice champion now. It will be one of the big frames, I'm sure, in Sheffield. A lot of snooker to be played before then, though, as of yesterday, 1st of February, 40 consecutive days of snooker in various tournaments. Twenty-four. And we may well see Mark Selby featuring in uh, a lot of those 40 days. He's won this frame. Mark Selby, 53, 24. got in the in lead. The Tech Shire. Couldn't quite get back into it. And Mark Selby strikes first blood here at the Tempodrome this afternoon. He leads Tep Chira Nu by one frame to nil. From Thailand, one nil to Selby. The winner plays either Mark Williams or Anthony Hamilton. And they're uh, on one of the outside Rachel. tables right now. Still Mark in the first Selby frame. Tonight, by the way, the last 16 starts. Our feature match here on table one will be Ali Carter, who's a former champion, against Zhao Yingtong, a very talented 19-year-old from China. So looking forward to that one later on. 7 o'clock UK time. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that match, actually. That's, uh, if you remember, when we watched the first of the Home Nations tournaments in Manchester, Zhao Yingtong took Ronnie O'Sullivan very close, 4-3 to the rocket in the end, in that match. So he's a real prospect up against an experienced player. Well, this is going to be some shot. What a brilliant effort that is. Goodness me, what a shot. Screwed with left hand running side. That is one of the shots of the tournament, I should think. I know it's only day two, but what a shot. Five. Well, I don't know what's planned at the mid-session interval, but I'd like to see even the great Jimmy White and Ronnie O'Sullivan try and recreate that shot. But they'll do well to play it as well as he did. It's brilliant. Oh, that's a real shame. That's a horrible uh -oh. kick. Is just a horrendous Five. luck. Well, Kibble just dies. All the reaction is lost. Tap on no twelve. But uh, as so often is the case, when that uh, you don't know where the keyboard's going to finish, it finishes somewhere pretty horrible. Nine. 
Mark Selby, one. Quite lucky in the end that he could just catch the very thin edge of the pink. back which was probably 50% of the shot safety shot. We've seen a, a typical contrast in this frame, the brilliant shot from Tupchar on the green and that safety shot from Mark Selby was typical of him. He's put Tupchar in all kinds of trouble now. a little out of character I mean we were right behind the line of the shot as you saw some excellent camera work there and uh, it was never in one so a chance now for Tepchar and you to get going in this match he would be expecting Selby to be on top in safety but he's at the table now with a good scoring chance just looking to build up some confidence again after that poor run that we mentioned. Seven first round defeats in eight tournaments since the Poland Classic last August. One thing about that though, the Paul Hunter Classic, of course he did make a maximum. And uh, twice last season he missed the last black on a 147, once in the UK Championship, once in the World Championship qualifiers, but uh, finally put that one to bed with the maximum we made in Firth here in Germany last August. Yeah, I think the less publicised of those two was in the, the World Championship qualifiers. I was actually commentating on that match and missed the black and the queue went flying across the table like you see in the sno snooker club when someone misses a, a shot for money. And that was a shot that he missed for a lot of money. If he's not on one there, there were so many options, goodness me. That final nudge on the red means that he's got a very narrow pocket opening to the right corner, the right middle bag here. This is difficult. Well, I can tell you, he feels so much frustration. As Dave was pointing out, when he came to the table, the reds were... Perfectly set, all in the middle of the table, all going to all pockets. And he finished up having to play that one. One. Yes, this is where Selby will be really looking to twist the knife and uh, punish the mistake.
Bett. Nein. Not ideal. Obviously the blue is all you can get at here, but to avoid a bulk colour is not entirely straightforward. Quite well controlled, though it's not exactly in 14. ideal position still. He needs to get a good shot, get it back in here. Because the previous shot, the one before the blue, was a little bit lacking in control. Fifteen. Now, where does the pink go is a question. I think he assumed it would go on the black spot, but... Cubal's on there now, so it would tie up the pink and black, I think, in behind his own spot. That's not really what he wanted. Couldn't have predicted that, that the cubal's going to finish on the black spot. Well, he's now opened up <laughs> the pink and black with that shot. I'm sure he didn't play it. He actually hit it pretty well, though. And, as I say, he's just struggling to get perfectly in position in this break. But the reds are so well spread, he always had something else to go for. 28. Now, once again, striving for perfect position. Helps that this red does pass the pink to the right corner. And there were only two frames 43. in, but this match is kind of going as I thought it might. And the top shot just makes the odd mistake and Mark just continues to take advantage. There's been some safety, but it's been more about the mistakes than the brilliant safety. 50. He's had chances in both frames. He's not taken them as Tepchire. 51. Well, certainly in this one, he had a golden chance to make a decent sized break. Went wrong pretty quickly. He lost position. Left himself a, a tough red to that right middle. Mark Selby's done what Mark Selby does. He stepped in and punished him. 58. This red, and it's snookers required. Fifty-nine. 
66? Sixty-seven. Well, if he plays the blue, it's the most natural for the yellow, but it means he can only make a break of 99. Now exactly 100 is possible, having taken the pink. Seventy-five. Seventy-eight. He's a proud man of Leicester, of course, Sir Mark Selby. I was reading in one of the papers this morning, he's picked his all-time Leicester City 11. The way they're going this season, he can maybe get in it. They've had a rotten time of it, haven't they, since uh, they won the league on the night he became world champion again at the Crucible. But he's done well since. With three ranking titles already this season. 87. 87. Beautifully played. 93. Not a way that most players would go to get on the black, but it's absolutely A1, and that's actually the best positional shot he's played in the whole break. Well, really classy clearance of 100 exactly. Thoroughly punished Tepchar and New. Mark Selby on top early on here in Berlin. He leads by two frames to nil. Welcome back to Tepchar. Mark Selby then swing up against Tepchar and New. He's just had a 100 break. Exactly in the second frame. Marco Fu, of course, has had a great run of it lately. He's won each with Dave Gilbert. Frame three. Michael Holtz won the first frame against Stuart Carrington. Anthony Hamilton, the first against Mark Williams. Frame four. Frame five. Frame four. Frame five. Frame five. Frame five. Frame the other match is Neil Robertson and Ben Wollaston. They're still in their first frame. Back there on the pink. There's a, a surprise, one. hitting the near jaw on what was a pretty regulation pink to the middle. And again, we were right behind it, and they're not going to drop in when you hit them there. Now, Chai really has to start making something of these opportunities that are coming. They're not coming all the time, but they are appearing in every frame, or certainly in the first two frames. Good. one. He's such a wonderful player, he can miss a ball as easily as that. I think, in, in general, it's just low confidence that run he's been on. He's not come here feeling great. One. And already in the match, he's being punished, and even so, that was... Uh, well, no-one saw a black for that. Yeah, and of course, leaving the pink row, he has. He's got a chance to go into them here, Selby. He's going to play this with pace. Lovely spread. Yeah, so Selby missed the pink, but right back in Seven. again immediately after Tepchar did the same thing. The applause is for Neil Robertson, he's knocked in the black to win the first frame against Ben Wollaston. Yeah, both players having had shots at the final black there, which is kind of always quite exciting. 
Sometimes a black ball finish is just someone clearing up. That was a slightly different set of circumstances. A long opening frame. You've got to wonder how this match is going to end up close because Tapchaya is missing chances when they're coming. Selby is just doing what he does, playing to about 80% of his game. Missing the odd one, but getting almost everything else. It does look a little one-sided, as if it could 16. go 5-0, 5-1, as it stands. We never quite know what we're going to get, but he's not quite with it today, Tepchaya. And of course, playing someone like Selby can take you out of your rhythm a little. It's not in a slow match, but you know, you don't get chances all the time. 21. Yes, yeah, Selby not flawless yet, but the point is, you know, you can afford to miss a couple of frame if your opponent's missing three a frame. 22. And Chai was feeling under pressure before the match. If it goes 3 0 down, then that just magnifies. It makes it a massive fourth frame for him. 28. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Forty-two. Well, plenty of uh, reds in the middle of the table. The ones on the cushions are not really a concern, even though there's already quite a few in front. And you can win the frame with what's there. <coughs> Saying that, you know, he, I feel that he's a real tournament player, the one that gets stronger. The deeper into the tournament he goes. I think we saw that in the UK Championship, where he played very well in the final against Ronnie O'Sullivan. 48. Him. So he's always more vulnerable in this round. First match at the venue itself 49. for him. Yeah, last three rounds in York. John Higgins 6 5, a real thrill of that. Played well against Sean Murphy in the semis, and then, as you say, brilliant final with O'Sullivan. 56. Red and a colour here, and it uh, should be 3 0 by Snookers. 57. Like we said, though, the pink that Tep Chai missed, that is uh, not a good sign for him. Not a good sign for anyone missing those. 62. So the lead is 62, the difference is 59. And one more red you feel would stop any playing on. 63. Well, now it's about whether we can knock in back to back centuries. 70. And playing this red, he might just chip one of the other two out into play. Mark Selby, 70. Well, it's not to be, but a and 70 a will do. Again, he's punished the error. It was some error as well from Tep Chai, who has had chances here this afternoon, just isn't taking them. And that's why Mark Selby is already two from victory, leading here by three frames to nil. As I say, two frames away from a place in the last 16. And so 3 nil to Mark Selby, Tep Chai, a new bang under pressure, could really do with a frame on the board. This is the last one before the interval. 
highest break 12, Tepshire, so far. Selby's had 5,300 and a 70 as well. One. Well, again, a great pot. It's n that's not been his problem getting in, it's staying in has been his problem. There's nothing wrong with this. Excellent. Yeah, it's very good, Dave. And also, he's actually got the perfect angle on the black to disturb some reds. Oh, goodness me. Well, uh, Tap channel, one. I think you summed it up perfectly. You know, it's not getting in, it's what he does when he's in. Because the red was superb, and um, you imagine more of a contrast between two shots, Dave. Well, it seems if it's missable, he'll pot it, and if it's unmissable, he'll, he'll miss it. <laughs> the pink in the last round, the black in this one. But if it's tough, he'll knock it in. So work that out. I guess there's less pressure on a ball that you could miss than one you shouldn't miss. Either way, he's missed it and Selby's back in. It's awkward queuing, but Nine. he only had to drop it in. He didn't have to do anything in particular with that. Just pot it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I spoke briefly to Tep Char before the game and asked him about how his season had gone. I mean, I knew he'd had a bad trot, but it kind of was almost reflected in the way he, 14. he spoke about how badly he had been playing. And unfortunately, with this game, it, uh, the confidence is down. It can stay down. You know? it's, it's hard to get your confidence and easy to lose it. And when it's gone, it's sometimes gone for a long period. Playing Mark Selby here was, was never going to make it any easier for him because he's a tough man to beat anyway. But he looks devoid of any confidence to me. An extremely gifted player. But Mark is doing a good job on him. And even that one just got there. I think that was going to stay out. Well, he looked to have missed it to me, but what he went in. 23. Yeah, this, uh, I mean, look where it catches the jaw. <laughs> but it went in. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Well, the scoreline 3-0, and I think the pot success tells you the difference between these two players, and I think it reflects the amount of balls that Anur has missed, 73%. They're not going to beat anybody with that, let alone Selby. And Selby typically 93%. Breaks of 53, 170. And now this. 54. So not being dragged down by the fact that his opponent isn't playing well. 
Highest breaks, as you can see, your tip chart is still just 12. Selby's had a century and three half centuries as well, including this one. Nothing's going to look good here for Tepchire and New with these stats put on the screen. There's another one, just emphasising that this is every inch of 4-0 as long as Selby just continues here and puts this one to bed. 59. Still going to need another red after the blue. Yeah, they might just try and drop this one in. And the cue ball did just drift a bit too far. Don't think he could have played it any other way. 64. Just wonder if he'll... Bear in mind he wants one more red, yeah, whether he would consider... the double to the left middle here. I think he might play it. I think he might play the double as a shot to nothing. It was not over, but Mark's he's a long way to, towards winning it. Well, it's the only thing that Tep Sharanu's <laughs> led the pack on doubles. He nailed a couple early on, but a uh, bit frustrating there for Selby. Although he's in control, he would have wanted to put it away there. Well, he just tried to pot it. He didn't try and do anything with the cue ball, but it still hit the first jaw and stayed there. Pretty well played. Don't think Shelby will be too troubled by this. Options are just to run up to the three reds in the middle of the table, or indeed maybe down on the, the red up in, in bulk there and behind that one. <coughs> He'd probably like to leave those three reds close together if he could, not disturb them. Because once again, the clearance isn't very easy with the, the reds a little tied up in the middle of the table. Should be snookered again after this shot. Either way, he's not left anything easy. One. But he knocks it in. I mean, these are the balls he's been potting today, the tough ones. Yes, yeah, so you've got to be a little careful. He can't take value uh, low value colors doesn't have the points to play with that's probably the worst kiss he could have got actually things not Six. happening
so we need six. It was very difficult to fancy him for that pot, the way the match has, has gone so far. to move one of these safe reds. Possibly could play a cross double here. Swing the cube up and down. Well, Foul. <laughs> that Tap is not part of the five. plan. No, and it just the points there just give Tep Charanu a little bit of leeway. Oh. The extra five points, quite useful actually. Now 52 in it. Free ball. Free ball as well. So that all went wrong, unusually for Selby. Well, that certainly helps as well. I think uh, the way the balls are now, as you're saying, I don't think it's going to come down to running out of points. It's a question whether you can clear or not. This would be a wonderful shot in the arm if he could somehow win this frame. The frame that he was, he's never really been in. Six. But another miss from short range. Just been Touch in Poland today. He's been potting the tough ones and missing the easier ones. Exactly right, Dave. He's missed about five or six very easy balls so far. And, and that's never going to win you a match against the world champion. So One. Selby, who's made the odd error himself, but nowhere near as many. Needs this blue and it's snookers required. Selby's been pretty solid all round. He's made the breaks 53, Six. 100, 70, 64. Tep Charles, high break, still only 12. Seven. Sometimes you see a 4 0 and you think, well, it should be two each. This is every inch a 4 0. I think we're seeing <coughs> Tep Chara and you, someone who's just struggling for confidence. He's had a poor run of results, really poor. Nine. Seven first round defeats in eight tournaments. And things not much going much better for him here in Berlin this afternoon. Mark Selby, Mark Selby firmly nine. on top. Tep is going to play on, but uh, he needs, well, three or four snookers. 55 the difference, 3 to tie, 4 to win. Against one of the game's greatest ever tactical players. Best of luck with that.
so Mark Selby covers the red and is going to be in a very, very strong position at the interval. I wonder if Tep Chai will go to the practice table. He needs something, doesn't he? But, uh, well, if he wins the match, it'll be one of the great turnarounds, bearing in mind the disparity Six. in how they played. Just too many errors from the tie. Tep Chai knew nods his head. It's been a very disappointing start for him. Mark Selby sitting pretty here in Berlin. Just one more frame needed for him as they go to the interval to reach the last 16. Mark Selby leading Tep Chiranu 4-0, and my word, it really is 4-0. It's just a giant holiday. But if you start um, driving yourself crazy, you can go mental. On a serious note, Anu is, um, is with Terry Griffiths. You know, he's, he's paying Griffiths for his services to coach so I, I wonder what Terry must have said in the interval to uh, you know to try and give him a bit of advice you know I'd, I'd uh, want a refund if I was tired at noon at the moment yeah but he's only just started with him giving chance Griffith sort of that I'm only joking Griffith sort of mate we're already underway we could be back with you in one frame let's get their chief holiday makers in the comedy box Dave Head and the Need Falls well, uh, Tepchara knew when on the practice table. Not, no great surprise about that in the interval. We'll see if it makes any difference at all. Selby well and truly on top here. 4-0, looking to put this one away. Yes, and there was no way to dress it up, was there, in the mid-session interval, looking at the shots that uh, Tepchara had missed. Uh, that's how one. it was. <laughs> and, uh, He's in first again here. Maybe the interval will in some way have changed things for him. Tremendously gifted player. I think that's the frustration that we all feel. Uh, listen to Ronnie and Jimmy. They know how good a player he is. Eight. Nine. Well, certainly, I think... <laughs> Had there not been an interval, it would have been 5 0 guaranteed. You'll just see if that little knock he had has made any difference at all in terms of, as Ronnie said, his confidence. This is already his highest break of the match. It's only 16. So that tells 16. you what the first half was like. 17. Could have gone into the bunch there, but they look very tightly packed, so 24. maybe he thought it was worth waiting while he might be topping the cue ball through here. He avoided the bunch, but at some point he's going to have to go into the... Played that well. He's a left-hander, he can easily 32. reach this. Thirty-three. It's going to be hard if he does go into the bunch from this shot to really make the reds spread. And that, of course, is always the problem. It's the extra pace on the ball. Tap channel thirty-three. And he wouldn't have been on anything easy anyway. A little bit unfortunate at that time. It was all about you lose your accuracy when you hit the ball that hard. safety shot here. It's 
Shelby just goes towards the containing safety. Don't try any flash at all. at all if you'd gone it off there and left that red available to the middle from hand. They certainly pull in a little there. We noticed it last night when Ronnie O'Sullivan played Mark King. A couple just drifted into the near jaw, which they meant to. If they're going to go any way, it would be down with the nap towards the first jaw on those drop down. That's a good shot. One. That's from there. Very fine queuing. Well, Mark Selby won. Well, you, you wanted to have missed the brown, obviously, um, but to hit it and pot it was something you could never imagine happening. Tip Chai is down on the shot before the brown's been respotted. And brilliant. One. It's much better. I'd like to see him just play to his standards, if only for a couple of frames maybe in a losing cause, but you know, it's a great entertainer. But they're not going in. They're just, he's missed so many shots the like that. One. And I think the frustration is mounting. He's a very calm and placid young man, but at the moment he's just going through the, all the agonies of, of this game here. Yes, it's uh, Jekyll and Hyde snooker from Tepchar and New. You know, if we put together a, a tape of his best shots, you'd think he'd be 4 0 up, but he's been missing the ones once he's got in. A lot of colours off spots and just uh, adding up to a pretty miserable afternoon for the tie. Eight. Mark Selby, Nine. who won two qualifiers 5 0 to get here, is in to complete another whitewash. Yes, I wouldn't bet against him doing it now because look at the state of the table. Also, absolutely perfect. Takes some doing to win. All these matches 5 nil. I know that he is the best player in the world on rankings and he is the world champion, but you know, to be that superior 17. to everyone you play is quite an effort. I think one of his strengths is that he takes every tournament as seriously as the last one, as the next one. He doesn't necessarily prioritise. Obviously, we know what the big events are, but he wants to win everything. He loves playing. That's the, the secret for Mark Selby. He always did as a as a kid in the club, Woody Thorns in Leicester, all the way to the Crucible, just loves playing snooker. Thirty-two. Yeah, 
Yes, and uh, that uh, early lead of Kepchaya is a uh, long way off now with Selby at the table and now level on points. I feel that he's just playing within himself also. He's played pretty well. But I feel there's another gear or two left if things got a little bit more... 46. ...stressful for him if the match got closer that he would find a little bit extra. At the moment, he's just getting through this match, it would seem, with an eye on his next round, which would be, of course, tomorrow. Forty-seven. Yes, Mark Williams or Anthony Hamilton to come if he does win this match. Hamilton, two 0 up there. Fifty-three. Yes, and of course he's in the part of the draw 54. where at the bottom half where players would play twice tomorrow in that section. Given that the next round starts tonight, those winners will only play once tomorrow. So it'll be a busy day for him. Fifty-eight. the thing with Selby though, tell him what 60. time he's got to play and he'll be there, he loves it and he's going to enjoy potting this green because it'll be the ball that sends him into the last 16. 54. I'm sure he was expecting a tougher 63. battle, he lost to Tep Chaya and knew the last time they played at the World Open in China earlier this season, but Tep Chaya, well he missed so many regulation pots and the search 67. for him for confidence goes on. Can't really take anything from this match. Yeah, you can see why he's been struggling. I mean, he's such a good player, but all those matches he lost in a row, he kind of been given a reason why. But that's not for Mark Selby to worry about. He's been thoroughly professional, played very well. And uh, another whitewash for him. Three in a row. Yes, he's a class act, isn't he? He's gone about his business very impressively. He's played well overall, but Tepchara knew he's got to be said, really struggled badly. And Mark Selby took what was there. He had a century, some other big breaks as well, ending with that 85. And in no time at all, he's through a winner by five frames to nil. You should probably thank you first because we now have a two and a half hour break. Well, I've always been a fast player anyway, so I don't know what you was worried <laughs> about. <laughs> 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 um, we, we just said uh, your resting heart rate must be sort of around about the mid to high 30s, the coolest player in the game. And uh, <laughs> first rounds for you, you, you go in with all the confidence of a world number one, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I've had a great season so far this year, won a few tournaments, which is always nice. But yeah, I mean, that was a tough game, Tep I know on paper I won 5 0, he didn't play well at all, but he's one of them players where when he does play his A game, he's capable of beating anyone. Mm. When he was making shots, as we were looking at in the mid session, you know, one little out of position from him and you would punish him with a great safety shot. Are you aware out there when your game is ticking over like that? So yeah, well? I, I knew I had to keep him tight because in the balls, as I say, is as good as anybody and he, he don't play that many safety shots, but I mean, obviously, he's such a good potter, he sort of gets away with it half the time, but today it just didn't happen for him he yeah. did put some fantastic balls and got himself in you know with like you know the, the green and like there was a, uh, another long red and then he would just give you the gift you the game straight back to yeah, you yeah, it, it was strange. very strange I was, I was saying to martin clark at the interval i said on the shot he looks great and he looks as though he's never ever going to miss a ball but then mm. sometimes he'll miss like the easiest ball you just can't imagine so no, he's i think it's probably because of how, how quick he plays sometimes he can get a little bit careless but at the same time he's not going to change his game because that's what makes him so dangerous yeah and we saw that actually in the fifth frame when he missed that uh, black hit it really hard, a, a relatively easy, easy black, the pace uh, done for that and you were in and it, it, was, it, was, it was frame over. Um, so cool, relaxed, confident, world number one, you know. Chill to the bone. Chill to the <laughs> I bone. I thought he was, gonna, he, he was in the balls and I knew he was probably thinking about a 147 because he, he's made one this season and he's missed the last black twice as well. So I knew that was probably in his mind, especially at 4-0. He's probably thinking, got nothing to lose now, give yeah. it a go. And that's probably why he missed it, really. We love this tournament. Uh, we love coming to cover it. This morning when we came on air, mm. half an hour before you struck a ball, there was 150 snooker fans sat around the edge here, cheering and, and, and hollering. Ronnie said quarter final. 
final day at the Tampa Drum was one of the best days in the whole snooker calendar. T do you share that? Is it, is it one of the tournaments that snooker players moan least about? Yeah, uh, not even just quarter final. I just think it's one of the best venues we play in. Uh, we've been c coming to Germany for so many years now. The crowd are fantastic everywhere we go. Poland's a classic. We get great crowds. Here we get great crowds and, and the setup out there, the five table setup, I think it's, it works and it's great value for the spectators as well. Yeah, you've won this previously. It's on the CV. You know nobody wins it twice. That's the way it is. <laughs> We're six years in, are we? So, you, 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 you know, not to put pressure on you because there's not a bead of sweat in that beautiful head of yours. But it, this, this, you know, there, this is history now. You've got to think about that. Of course, yeah. I mean, any tournament I go into, uh, I, I have self-belief in myself and, and try my hardest. If it's good enough, great. If it's not, obviously, I'm back to the practice table and go again. So hopefully this week it could be my week. Absolutely. And we've had many times in Eurosport this season and last, of course, where we watched you. Uh, lift major trophies uh, uh, above your head, whether it be here at the Temperdrome as it was or any, anywhere else. Yeah, that was two years ago. I mean, there was a lot made of holding all three of the Triple Crown at the one time. All right, it's, all right. It's, but uh, that's what I mean. You're, you're, you're playing so well at the moment. You're, you're such a clear world number one. That's the highest the standard you're being judged by, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself anyway, whatever tournament I go into, because I know if I do turn up and play the game I'm capable of, then I've got every chance. So when you're not performing like that, you sort of get a little bit down on yourself and, and start looking for things sometimes. Yeah, well, let's have a look at some of the best shots that you played this afternoon and what was lightning quick, uh, of course, and the word I always use is clinical, but Jimmy and Mark, take us through some of these. Well, it's a fantastic shot here. He, he, the white is close to the yellow pocket. He has no shot on him. I think he rolls up to these two reds. Yeah, I, 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 I knew the, the reds were going towards the left-hand cushion, so I thought if I can play the red into, into the pack, open him up and, and play quite an attacking shot and, and put him in trouble. Mm. Nice shot just round the angles there for the pink. Yeah, it was a natural angle to kiss the red off the black spot. But yeah. I mean, I didn't really, the white didn't really move, so I sort of put myself in trouble after that. Yeah, that was a nice shot. They're, they're quite difficult queuing down on the yeah. ball. I mean, I didn't want to leave Ampered over the red, but I thought, was that I, to, all right? I, I thought I wanted to go into them because it needed to free them up. But yeah, yeah. I mean, this light couldn't have worked out any better, that shot. Yeah. No, good stuff. Absolutely. Fantastic stuff. Well, listen, best of luck Thank you very uh, much. to you going forward. Last 16. Come stick and fast here. Do you prefer a tournament where you can get your feet under the table and spend, you know, two weeks in a venue? Or do you like this short, sharp five days, blink and you miss it? Yeah, I think it's good because like, I think now I'm playing every day if you keep winning. But then sometimes you go to some great cities like this in Berlin and it is nice sometimes to have a day off and have a little walk around. But not when it's snowing outside, I'd rather just stay indoors and keep playing. Yeah, but that's what it's going to be. There's good Africa Cup of Nations on tonight in Eurosport if you want to watch. Watch that semi finals. Yeah, I've recorded them actually. Yeah, yeah. So no, I'll, I'll don't, don't, you, don't you dare. No, Cam Cameroon against Ghana. Nice. What a game that is. Uh, we get loads of tweets and texts coming in with us being live. Obviously, we encourage as many people to get in touch. It's hashtag German Masters.